Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hey everybody, it's Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow coming to you tonight after a 110-107 Mavericks loss to the Clippers. Uh, I don't know. That, that, that <laughs> game is a uh, game, kind of one of those multi-tiered gut punches. Um, just with news of the night, Dwight Powell is likely done for the year. The Mavericks aren't probably going to confirm it till tomorrow. Uh, but I'd be surprised if it was anything other than an Achilles tear. If you watched the game, you saw it. If you didn't, I recommend not seeking it out. It's just one of those injuries that'll make your stomach churn and stick with you for a while. Um, and then the Mavericks, um, uh, they made just enough mistakes in the second half to where they really didn't deserve to be that close. Uh, the Clippers are too good of a team, even without Paul George. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Josh? Yeah, it's it's just a weird it's a weird night. It was really hard for the first like hour after that pal injury to really care about the game, mm-hmm. to be completely honest. Just right. knowing how you know, this isn't I know this sounds really weird, but you know, the Mavs already confirmed it was an Achilles injury. You know, we don't have a hundred percent confirmation if it is a tear, but you know, this isn't like a uh you know, it's not like a torn ACL or or something like you know, the, the history, as we've gone over with J.J. Barea, the history of NBA players with Achilles injury is just, it's just devastating. And it's just really hard to think about, you know, what will be of Powell's career when he returns from this injury, to, you know, and, and that's just tough to think about. It's tough to think about considering the kind of person he is and what he means to the Mavs, not just on the court, but what he means to the community off the court. I know, Kirk, you really push hard for us to try to write about this stuff the Mavs do in the community, but it's kind of hard since they do it, you know, it's during during yeah. our real work hours, but Pal is one of the leaders on the team in that regard. Uh, so, yeah, it's, t- you know, it's, it's tough to, it's, it's tough for us watching and I can't imagine what the team, the team must have been shell-shocked in the locker room during halftime. Like that's, that's tough. That's brutal to see. And, you know, for the fact that they made it close, you know, they did make those mistakes, but you know, they had some fight in them and they, and they went out there against a team. That's just a matchup nightmare for the Mavs. Like, Holy crap. It's like the Clippers were designed in a laboratory to specifically guard and punish this Mavs team. Uh, so yeah, it was just, it was super frustrating. Like you said, you're correct about the mistakes, um, I know you're hot about it, but the missed free throws, like, that's just, I don't know. That's just one of those things where it's like, it's got to be fixed. There's nothing else it's to really say. Got to be fixed. Who yeah. They need they need to hire a coach. They need to get him in the gym. And it's not just Luca. Uh, you know, we Powell's having a, a career low free throw shooting percentage this season by an out, like, 
past a, a, a margin to where it's it's you know okay this could just bounce back like he he was shooting five percent lower than his worst possible season it's you know and Luca is is simply I mean I think he's better but the kind of misses that he has it's not like they're there's just something that doesn't look right. I, I don't, I don't know the, the free throws, I guess we should maybe table for another day. I, cause it's not really like we could say anything other than they got to make them, you know, it's yeah, not like, I mean, yeah. no scheming to free throws. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the offensive rebounds really kicked the crap out of Dallas. I, yep. the, they, they got crushed on the boards tonight by, by eight. And the Clippers had exactly eight more offensive rebounds than they did. Giving up 20 offensive rebounds to one team is the sort of like this is why we have a segment of fans that are just calling for for the Mavericks to bring in another big guy. And you and I know what the data says. Big picture, Mavericks are a pretty darn good rebounding team. But when you watch a third quarter stretch where Harold basically tosses every Mav out of the way and just goes and gets the basket. Uh, it's pretty gross and and, you know they they put in kp and boban for not for rebounding purposes i can tell you that much because they didn't really get many when those two were in there i i I, it's this game i hate to use this comparison there it's calories movie called the replacements and there's a scene uh where they talk about quicksand and about how that feeling where you get trapped in it and there's just nothing you can do right a wrong move leads to a wrong move leads to a wrong move the Mavericks got in quicksand for about four minutes in the third quarter, and it was basically what cost them the game. Yeah, uh, and you're right. You know, Kristaps had nine rebounds, but only five of them were defensive boards. So, you know, that's not great. Boban actually had seven in 16 minutes, but you're right. He's just – there's only so much you can really ask of, of Boban mm-hmm. in terms of how much he can give you and the, the spurts that he can give you because he just can't play – you know, extended minutes. Maxi had four defensive rebounds. Like, yeah, it's just, that's, that's tough. And you talked about, yeah, the, at the avalanche kind of, it kind of grew on them in the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, I was really curious to see like what the clutch time offense would look like, because that's obviously been a hot button topic and the Mavs have been really bad. I actually didn't have too much of an issue. I think Luca took one before the game got kind of into junk time, like where they were, they were trying to foul and get back into it before it got to that point before the sham at three toward the end of the 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 last three he made Mm -hmm. i think luca took two step backs and made one so i can live with that they got maxi an open shot in the corner uh so the offense i didn't actually have too much of an issue with you know they missed some shots but they they got good shots for the most part it wasn't like just a bunch of luca step backs uh the defense was just that was tough uh Kawhi went into mj mode and they put Maxi on him. They put Dorian on him, and it didn't matter. Um, Dorian, in particular, I thought this was a rough game for for Finney Smith. Uh, the the Shamit three that he made that kind of sealed the game. Uh, Kawhi had you know Luca knocked the ball away from Kawhi, and he had picked up his dribble with about six seconds left in the shot clock, and then Finney Smith just left Shamit like sh- just completely ignored hit guarding him and went to went to trap Kawhi. And, you know maybe tried to tried to get the ball maybe sensing that there was a potential turnover there but really when you think about that situation Kawhi was dead dead meat with six seconds on the shot clock you just let him shoot that contested shot against Luca and, and pray he misses but you know just leaving Shamit there wide open with like three seconds left is that was just killer look it just looked a little aloof for that kind of situation and yeah like you said the Mavericks just made they made too many mistakes against a team as good as Clippers to get the win yeah yep all right guys we'll be back uh right after a short break this is advertiser content brought to you by Frito-Lay hello I'm Chip Murphy here to get you ready for the big tournament tonight we'll break down we break down who will be cutting cut what are you two doing sorry Chip Prez here got his feathers ruffled when I told him Ruffles has zero chance of winning the title And I was letting Dip know that she is not taking into account Ruffles' iconic ridges. Guys, it's March. We have to start talking about the tournament. We are. 
It is the 2023 Frito-Lay Snackin. We're talking about big time matchups between Cheetos, Smart Food, Lay's, Sun Chips, and more. Just head to the Frito-Lay Snack Bracket and vote for your favorite chip, pretzel, or dip for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. This sounds great. Keep up the good work. Just go to frito No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends 4-3-2023. Void wherever hip. Here's worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Okay, guys, I'm back with uh, Josh Bow. we got a few minutes left before we wrap it up here. Um, I just kind of want to talk about, you know, a couple of things lingering away from the game. Uh, first, you made a really interesting point in our Slack. I feel like every game it's you know, earlier in the season, the first 20 games, the Mavs were really rolling. It was a game of musical chairs to see who between Brunson, uh, Curry and Wright would really step up. And over the last 20 games or so, it feels like the opposite over like which one of them is going to just tank whatever's happening on the floor. Uh, Neither, none of the three was particularly bad tonight. In fact, Wright made that amazing play uh, towards the end to get to get that wide open shot for um, for for Tim Hardaway. Uh, but these guys are just they're not contributing in the ways that they were earlier in the year. Or am I wrong? What do you think? No, it definitely it's you know I think that Wright play that steal he made is kind of. You look at that and you're like, man, well, you know, you wish that they could make, he could make a few, a couple more impact plays a game. You know, it's tough. He's definitely the kind of guy that kind of eases into the background of a game, whether it's good or bad. So when he's really good, he's not necessarily always making those eye popping steals or, or, you know, he's not necessarily jumping off the screen when you're watching him. But the counterpoint of that is just sometimes when the team is, obviously slumping like it is against the Clippers and mentally they are drained because of the pal injury and their shots aren't falling. And you would just hope that there'd just be a little, you know, just a little something. It's really hard to to talk about and quantify, but you just hope that he could just a splash play, you know, so to speak, you know, 12 minutes took two shots, made one. He had the great steal, but two points, two assists, you know, he's a plus two in his 12 minutes, but, there's just got to be a little bit more in terms of like realized production there. And Wright kind of slips in and out of games like that. Uh, Brunson, you know, he's been really unpredictable off the bench. Uh, I think something that you've talked about Kirk is he doesn't seem ready to shoot open threes. Uh, Mm -hmm. He will dribble himself out of it or he'll pump fake before he shoots. I think that's got to be cleaned up for him. Uh, And then Curry, you know, that's been, this has been all season with Curry just, the inconsistency in terms of getting him looks like 19 minutes, six shots, three threes. You would just imagine he would get more looks. Like he just doesn't, he, he for the Mavericks bet, you know, coming into the season, he was their best three point shooter. You would just assume that he would get more looks uh, and he just doesn't shoot the ball a lot. And whether that's by design or whether Curry's a little hesitant or the Mavs aren't running plays or defenses are really keyed in on him. Cause you know, you'd probably rather guard Curry really hard than, and you would rather leave open Finney Smith, even though Finney Smith has bounced back a little bit with his three point shooting this season. You know, maybe that's it. It's just those are three guys that you know you would you would say so many M teams in the NBA would kill to have those three guys off their bench, kill to have one or two of those guards off the bench because it's so hard to find quality guards to come off the bench in this league. And the Mavs have three of them, and you would just. You just love to see just a little, just a little more in terms of kind of impact and realized production. I think. Yeah, I think the only other thing we got to talk about is that it's it's it was nice to see Porzingis back out there. Um, yep. I'm glad yep. he looked good. He looked well. Actually, looked like crap, but he didn't look to, <laughs> he, he didn't look to be suffering any any consequences or any any you know lingering effects from his knee. He was running around really well. He still. You know, he, he just lands like a baby deer every time he jumps. I'm just I'm horrified every time he leaves the floor. That that great feeling is back in my stomach. Um, his shot is butt, and I'm <laughs> I, like I don't you know maybe it'll take a full year for him to figure it out again. But you know, watching a guy that's that tall with that quick of a release basically shoot a straight line jumper 
is really incredible. He has no arc. His shot doesn't look the same any time. I, I really believe he's skilled enough to get it back uh, because when it's going, it looks incredible. But when it's off, oh, my God. Like, the Mavs uh, have that that incredible rim mic, which really uh, <laughs> it, it ends up making things feel, you know, kind of more ridiculous. Uh, but that, what you know, when he misses a shot, it's like, oh, no, are, are we being shelled by bombs? Because it just goes clang. <laughs> like, it, I, I don't know. I big picture great to see him back uh it, you know we really missed him his absence was obviously evident but now you know with with Powell going out that you know close one hole and another opens right up I, it's it's i don't know i'm 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 just really trying to shake bad feelings from that game yeah and with Persingas, you're right that line drive like i don't think i've ever seen him get like a shooter's touch on a jumper this this season like there's just no opportunity when you shoot it like that it, it's gonna miss and it's it's gonna miss hard off the rim like you said it is a shame though i think the the three games before he got hurt uh three of eight from three four of nine from three three of seven from three you know that's 37 percent or better in three straight games and then he gets hurt so it, you know who knows if he was turning the corner a little bit before then and this kind of threw him off so you know maybe we give him a couple games to, to see what happens um what did you think uh i feel like we have to talk about this before we leave but you know the the tim hardaway jr shot to tie the game you know luca passing it at the end when it looked like he seemed like he had some room to to fire up a three to tie it but he passed it to tim Hardaway jr who was way wide open i have thoughts on it what what were you thinking about it because i haven't really heard you talk about it yet i think it was the right play if you look at look at luca's shot chart he's shooting 30 percent above the break from three like he's not a good three-point shooter out there it doesn't matter if it's a step back it doesn't matter if it's a catch and shoot and Hardaway is a better shooter right now I would have liked to have seen it shoot it in the sense of I believe he has kind of the clutch gene he has the moment for it but you know the late closeout and Hardaway's just been on fire from these catch and shoot shots so it could have gone either way I think overall it's the correct basketball play um, I think, uh, my, my dear friend, Matt Moore is getting roasted on Twitter at the moment for, for <laughs> saying Lucas should have shot it, but you know, I, I think there's an argument for both really. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to split hairs and, and say, you know, I agree. He made the right play to Tim Hardaway Jr. But I hope sometime in the, the near future, sooner rather than later, that that's Lucas shot. Like it needs to eventually be his shot. Like he needs to. He needs to be a better shooter from three so that he, you know, that's a good shot for him. And then he just, you know, he, that it's his team. And, you know, of course you want your, you want your guy to take the shot in, in the, in the final seconds. But uh, yeah, it, they, I'm totally with you hundred percent, the right play uh, in that, in that situation, I think. Yeah. The last thing I'd like to talk about, and I, I need to preface this by saying, I hate the guy that I'm becoming in this sense. Uh -oh. I haven't cared about refs since like 2005. I, I really haven't. You know, maybe eh, it's probably 2007. Um, but we <laughs> yeah. all know what happened in 2006. But I've really not cared about the refs. I, I think the NBA refs are generally pretty good. I think Luka Doncic is a pain in the neck to to referee. But this game tonight was a tremendously bad example of refereeing. Uh, starting with Kawhi Leonard, who's a monster to ref to, he, his, his, his signature shot might be his drive and push because he gets all the way to the rim and around the block. If his man is square in front of him, he literally shoves him with the off arm. It happened four times tonight. And, you know, each time whoever was guarding him got called for the foul. The other thing I'm, I really don't understand is what it's going to take for Luca to get some of these calls. There's a, a non-call right before the end of the first half where Kawhi has a handful of his shorts. There's an amazing screenshot I retweeted that's on my timeline. Somebody, somebody should go find it. it. It's just incredible the kind of weird I, – I feel like Luca gets more calls on three-point shots than I do his probes to the lane. Now, he shot plenty of free throws tonight, uh, comparatively. He shot 14 free throws. So I'm not necessarily complaining about the free throws taken. I'm just, I'm, I'm really curious what just the inconsistency from call to call that happens with, with, you know, the way these Mavs are playing. And they just get hosed at home. 
that's where they've been. You know, they haven't beaten. I don't think they've beaten a West playoff team at home this season. No, which they haven't. Is, is is freaking incredible and it's because they keep running into these situations like they, they had they committed seven more personal fouls than the clippers like that that's not a thing and the clippers <laughs> shot shot a whopping shot i mean i guess it's only yeah they shot nine more free throws like you know it's they, again this, these things didn't necessarily decide the game but i'm just i'm becoming a refs guy i'm becoming a rockets fan do better this sucks yeah, it's it, it it goes it ties all back into their weird the weird energy and on in home games. Like I I think this is a part of it. Like they don't you don't want to say, you know, you just assume that you're going to usually get a friendlier whistle at home, right? Not necessarily trying to be biased or, you know, be a you know, like you said a ref guy, but you just kind of assume that the 50-50 calls usually go the home team's way, right? And it mm-hmm. just feels like that hasn't that hasn't happened this year, and I think it's the thing that's I'm probably getting us the most is just how egregious the missed ones are. I don't, you know, every game he's gonna get you're gonna get missed calls, but it's it's the one where you can hear the slap throughout the arena and you can hear it on your television, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, it's it, that's the stuff that that drives you a little nutty. Um, and with Luca, like I don't know what you know, Luca is really at this point. I think we've talked about it before, but like. Are the refs just like, hey, you're 20 and we don't care how good you are. You can't be yapping at us as much as you are. Like, I wonder if some of that's going on. I think we've talked about that before. But, you know, he he was he's been in the refs ear for for two years because he did it his rookie year, too. So I almost just wonder if this is like a subconscious thing that refs are like a little sick of a guy that can't even buy alcohol yet is trying to show them up a little bit. I don't know. I'm just playing weird armchair psychologists from my living room but yeah it sucks yeah yeah well but uh, um you know there's a couple more things we could talk about but i'm just i don't know i'm kind of i'm kind of at you know oh this is interesting uh delon wright's brother uh is not happy about his playing time and uh uh, dorel wright uh and is tweeting about that so that's that's a thing oh it's beautiful it's just what we needed I know this is exactly, you know, what the Mavs needed tonight um, is one more thing. So, all right, guys, I, uh, you know, this sucks. Thanks for joining us. There's not really much more to say. When do the Mavs play again? I don't have any idea. I'm just kind of, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a real professional broadcaster. Oh, okay. They play the Blazers at another bloody night game on Thursday. Uh, at uh, 10 30 at night eastern time 9 30 local for everybody <laughs> in mavs so we get to stay up late and maybe be upset then too <laughs> oh. Probably. all right all right all right this has been kirk henderson and josh bow with mavs moneyball after dark we will talk to you guys at some point this week i'm sure <laughs>